Hi guys, Freddy here with another Retro RPG and you can see my face so we're going to be doing a PDF on the computer instead of presenting a book. But a couple of things I'd like to go over first. First of all, I'm using the global quarantine, the isolation we're all going through to grow in a full beard. So you'll excuse the facial fuzz for a while. And secondly, this is a request that's been sent in. Uh, I've been asked to present Reichstar. Now, I actually do own Reichstar, but my copy is at my mother's and with the global quarantine on she's 89 years old and I am not going to risk going anywhere near her. So I went online and I tried to buy it through drive through uh, RPG and could not find it online for purchase. So I've downloaded a pretty dodgy PDF copy which I'll be presenting but I don't like doing that. I've only done it because I already own the book. Um, Please don't download people's work and copy it. It's not fair on the authors, but in this circumstance I've been forced to do it because I cannot go and get my physical copy from where it is. And with that, let's go over to the item itself. And this is Reichstar. It's a 1990 role-playing game by Creative Encounters. Um, in my search online, I don't seem to have found it being republished ever since then. There were rumours in the early 2000s that it was going to get a reprinting, but I can't find any evidence of that. You can find copies on Amazon, uh, which are about 35 bucks, so not a terrible price to buy, um, but they appear to have been published back in the 1990s, so are 30 years old, so I don't uh, guarantee what quality it is. It's a role-playing game set in an alternate history where the Axis won the Second World War and there are now Space Nazis and the Space Japanese Empire. They've gone out, they've colonized other star systems, they've met some fairly low-tech alien species and conquered them. But now uh, Resistance has sprung up who are fighting the Nazis and that's where you enter. You are a member of the resistance against space Nazis. But let's go to the back cover. Flip through the pages. And the back cover doesn't actually tell us much. Uh, 1943, German V-4 atomic missiles devastate New York and London, ending the War of Unification. 2134, the revolution begins. Everything needed to play, including rules for character generation, character skills and abilities, psychic abilities, all forms of combat, gaming in different environments, bots, borgs and anthromorphs, three alien races, starship construction, a comprehensive guide to the social, political, economical and military structure of the Third Reich and the Empire of Nippon, introductory adventure module, plus much more dice not included and it was published by Creative Encounters in the USA and in the UK. This copy cost 19.95 at the moment, at the time. And as I said that back cover doesn't tell us much. So let's start going through the pages. Now we've got a fairly standard dedication there um, and the designers so Kitten Richardson and Simon Bell seem to have done much of the work with Greg West doing the cover, which is a fairly nice image. Sci-fi role-playing in a terrifying future that might have been. And we've got the flags above of the Nazis and the Empire of Nihon and futuristic type guardsmen. They don't look very Nazi. I would have preferred if they'd kind of kept the style of the helmets or something, even if they did have the gas masks on. But um, there's not much wrong with it. There's a lack of swastikas on it. I would have definitely preferred it to look more Nazi, I'm afraid. It doesn't seem to do that. Anyway, carrying on through, we've got a foreword which sort of details roughly about the game, um, information about how um, Getting back to some of the other parallels in the book, you only have to look as far as the White Patriots and Ku Klux Klan in the US, or the African and Defense Force in South Africa, before you run to Nazi ideals of white supremacy. So it's detailing how white supremacist groups are still surviving in the real world, but also how in the fantasy world they kind of joined up with the Nazis and rose. Um, what else we got? Table of Contents the sort of logo of the new Third Reich. 
um, Right Star History, Introduction to Role Playing, very sort of generic stuff, playing for the first time. And we have the attributes. Now these were something I really wanted to go through. So we've got fairly standard attributes starting off. We've got Strength, we've got Constitution, we've got Dexterity, and we've got Intelligence and Willpower. Now that seems all standard. Then we have Awareness and Observation. Well, these two seem to cover very much the same ground to me. What's the difference between Awareness and Observation? And then we're on to the three final ones. Appearance, Voice and Charm. Now I can understand most role-playing games tend to use Charisma. So in Dungeons and & Dragons and lots of other games you've got Charisma. And having played characters who I've described as having terrible personalities, but they have a high Charisma, so I therefore say they must be good looking. Um, I can understand why you would split appearance and charm. But voice as well. Voice rating is a representation of the vocal quality of a character. This attribute takes into account how, such things as how pleasing or nerve grating a person sounds when they speak, or what kind of singing voice the character has. I don't get that. Surely that's part of charm, maybe appearance. The Games Master can make it up. This really seems to be going a step too far because that takes us up to 10 attributes, which seems too many. I can understand having a more detailed system where you want to have more details about your character to flesh it out, but 10 attributes just seems too many. To It's unwieldy. I'm carrying on through. So we have character professions. Now, Reichstar does not deal with character templates or character classes. What it does have is these professions, which kind of detail more role-playing wise what your character's like. So your character is a bounty hunter or an entertainer or an artist, craftsman or a thief or a mercenary. Or many of these other ones, smuggler, merchant, gangster, corporate executive, police security, reporter, merchant marine, secret agent, soldier, explorer, priest, Pirate, and he does look like a sort of high tech space pirate. Uh, detective, freedom fighter, star hopper, skip tracer, and assassin. So we have all these, but this is just a rough guide to what kind of person your character is. You could as well just be a school teacher who's joined the resistance or whatever. In fact, I think those would probably be better, but this does give a reason why your character might have combat skills. And got, speaking of skills, we're onto the skill list, and they've got a mixture of standard skills and robotic skills. It does come across a bit as a sort of spy game. If we carry on through them, we've got things bargain and bribe, interrogation, um, streetwise, forgery, mysticism, which fit into a World War II sort of setting taken forward. We've got skiing there and you know where eagles dare you know you've got the people skiing down the mountains to fight nazis it all seems to fit in quite well um occultism again the sort of occult side of the third reich really fits in nicely psychoanalysis and then we're onto a very detailed advantage and disadvantage system and i really like it i have to say there's a good list here so you can really make up your character and flesh out a detailed history because you've disadvantage such as blind or um, missing eye so you can have a character who's been hurt by the Nazis and they're missing an eye so they're a more skilled character because they've done more and ended up losing this eye um, I like this system it's not as unwieldy and massive as that by systems which are totally built around that like GURPS it's on par, I would say, with things like the World of Darkness, with Vampire, Werewolf and the like, where you've got a very detailed back, um, advantage and disadvantage system, perks and flaws, I think they're called in Werewolf, where you can make your character more interesting by giving them these advantages or disadvantages. Megalomania. Split personality. Sworn Oath. No conscience, migraine headaches, insomnia. There's just so many in here. Asthma, quadriplegic, death mark, high rad content. Oh, high rad count, sorry. And then we've got a detail of rad count below. Personality types, notoriety, 
these are all really nice and help flesh out the character. It's a solid system. Then we're on to psychic abilities. Um, empathy, telepathy, psychometry, divination, precognition, clairvoyance, and many, many more. And we've got the character sheets here. So we have the ten attributes, as I said, and it's a long list. Physical description, psychological profile, your advantages and disadvantages, a massive space for skills and equipment on the back. The Games Master section, again, it seems like it's set for beginners. It details, you know, what does a Games Master do, how to create a, a plot, types of scenarios, other types of adventures. It's helping you out here by giving you a guide as to what kind of games you'd be playing. Running a split group, multiple characters, running different groups in tandem. Um, there's even a section on awarding merit points. Uh, miscellaneous rules, you know, the standard stuff, illness and disease, burn damage. We're into sort of armor and atmospheres. We've got vacuum because this is a space game as well. The combat section with the different hit locations. I'm not going to spend much time on these. Karate. Free fighting. Analysis of damage to the body. Dealing with um, um, role-playing amnesia can be quite interesting. Uh, what else we got? Bolt guns, shotguns, needlers, different uh, high-tech weapons, different types of armor, Kevlar, ceramic, plastisteel, minon. Average statistics for various weapons, weapons damages, equipment list. Uh, again, it seems to be like sort of spy things. So we have bug detector, parabolic microphone, ECM white noise generator, which makes a lot of sense when you're playing as a resistance. You're fighting a high-tech uh, force who are trying to monitor you. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Skymaster hover car and police hover car. I would have preferred it if they'd been a bit more World War II in design, you know, like a Kubel wagon, but a hover version of it. These are generic sci-fi. These wouldn't look out of place in Blade Runner. It doesn't make any reason why this is particular style to Reichstar. Um, weapon stats. This does look a bit more World War II. We've got an obvious Luger here, various types of guns which aren't out of place, but we've also got sci-fi variants. I'd have liked it if the sci-fi variants had kept a style to it, but they don't. Um, bots, Borgs and Anthromorphs. So robots and simple robots, we've got more complex ones, and then Anthromorphs, which are basically um, synthetic people. The most advanced robots. Um, including rules for malfunctions, we've got detailing of cyborgs and what can be done with those, and we're on to sort of big robots here. So we've got the Nagatami Corporation's Bushido Sentry Robot, which does have a very s simple samurai styling, but I think could have been a b done a bit better. Uh, Kaibahans, Cyborg Dogs, Mecha Gangers, and we're into a starship section. Where we go through designing a starship, different things, trans-dimensional initiator, um, winged uh, streamlining. Now, so we've got life support computer. All the elements of a starship. It goes into quite a bit of detail. Different types of weapons. So weapon stations with lasers, rail guns, um, electrostatic disruptors, tractor beams, mines. It's a sci-fi game, and you've got interesting starships. Uh, that looks very 2001, the space station there. Ship speed, turning mode, let's keep on skipping through. Transponders, contragrav capacitors, life support, EVA pods, which looks a bit mecha to me, but it's an interesting looking design. Some starships, but they don't really go into too many details, except for the Messerschmitt ME981 Breischwert space superiority starfighter, which does look a bit... Um, World War Two style. Um, also looks a bit um, conflict-free space or Wing Commander-ish. Different technology. The Mesh 981 again. Um, Imperial HK-11 Starfighter. 
Now this is obviously a sort of pencil drawn uh, Starfighter. It's very nicely done. The person who's done it's got a lot of talent, but it does remind me of when I was at school and we would doodle starships in the margins of our jotters. Now it looks homemade. Um, if we skip on a couple of pages we can see these are more blueprints. I would have much preferred if all the designs had been blueprints, but I am a fan boy for blueprints, I have to admit. Um, Bauschmann Freighter, let's keep on skipping through, a map of the world, Erd and in the colonies, so it goes through Earth, Erd in German, um, how the world has changed, you know, entertainment, religion, crimes and punishment, and then we go into starports and we go off world, do we not, at Luna, Mars, the Sirius system with Wotan, and the Zula Thujari, an alien race which live there. What else we got? The Z Zachki, an alien race which live in Betelgeuse. And Barnard Star, which has the Kulanub. I have no idea how that's supposed to be pronounced. We have a few NPC characters here, so going through who runs Germany in the future. I would have kind of liked if it had been family members of the people who are famous in the uh, Third Reich. You know, if we'd had Heinrich Himmler's great-great-grandson as the new uh, Reich Chancellor or whatever, but they've gone on with new characters, which kind of makes sense, but I would have liked it to have been reminiscent. I think it would have made it easier as a games master to get into the world if you could instantly think of the characters from the real world and transpose them. Um, more Emperor Miyamoto, so I guess that is the real world ancestor. Uh, what else we got? Different. Uh, we've got the Italian Socialist Republic, Martian Agreements, Organization of the Third Reich, Resistance Groups. So we've got some resistance groups the players can be part of the Tower, the Red Flame, and Ragnarok, the Horror Society, Sakura Kai? Sakura Kai. There we go. The Blood Brotherhood. The American Liberation Lead, Knights of Holy Retribution, the Islamic Jihad, the Doomsday Society. All of these sound not entirely nice for you to join up with, but apparently these are the good guys. The Jewish Liberation Front. Um, got other societies, so the Yakuza and the Mafia. We've got a timeline of history. Random encounters, space encounters, tavern encounters, reaction rolls, animal encounters, shop troopers and vehicles, and then some sample stats for people you might encounter. Typical Reich officer, uh, typical Reich Navy SSG trooper, typical Gestapo agent, and so on and so forth. Vehicles, space pirates. Uh, Brother Jacob, Peter Zaid, and we are into an introductory adventure. Lots of boxed out text, it seems quite detailed, it's nothing I've ever played so I don't really know how well this adventure runs, but it's interesting stuff. And then we've got some handouts and a bibliography and suggested reading or viewing. So we've got things like The Rise and Fall of the Thurker Reich, Mein Kampf, Hitler's Secret Book, um, We've got stuff over here like Blade Runner, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep and Man in the High Castle? And giving us a clue as to the sort of technology level they're expecting. We have 2001 A Space Odyssey and 2000 Odyssey 2 book and film. So that's the kind of space travel they're doing. It's not Millennium Falcon, starfighters soaring through the sky and making hyperspace jumps. It is larger vessels lumbering their way across solar systems, making voyages which take months. Um, and we are at the back. So it's an interesting game. I'm kind of sad that it's out of print and it's impossible to get a copy of these days, but I really do think it's uh, something worth a look, especially if like alternate history stuff. I really liked The Man in the High Castle and stuff like that. And this game really covers that genre very, very well. Anyway, as always, many, many thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing, but most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.